so we've got all these different CPI values in terms of their, their calculation. So again, I don't think the CPI is, is too terribly uh, difficult to find. It is a lot more work in terms of like actual real life because again, you're having to make those baskets, you're having to track those baskets, you're having to kind of, uh, you're, you're actually doing a lot more work to find the CPI than you are to find the GDP uh, deflator. Um, the CPI also does have a couple of uh, drawbacks that go with it. Um, we actually think that um, this is, it, it kind of fluctuates a little bit more wildly, I, I guess is maybe a way of phrasing that, where the deflator doesn't fluctuate as much. Um, and what that means is, is the CPI tends to have higher peaks and lower valleys whenever you kind of calculate it out as an inflation rate. It, it seems to have more volatility. Um, and I kind of think that some of that is based on how they're forced to calculate it. In order for it to be a useful index, we again have to make sure that we're buying the same stuff. If we're buying different things, we're not able actually to track prices. So they do keep that basket the same for two years. And, and again, that can lead to some of that really wild fluctuation. Um, if you think about, okay, what did you buy this month? Okay, so well, what did you buy this month? Um, well, you, you bought gas in your car. Um, gas prices are way low right now. The Sam's by my house, $1.69 today. So I will be stopping on my way home. Um, so gas prices really, really, really low today. Um, what else did you do? Well, maybe you had to go into Sam's and you bought toilet paper and hand sanitizer. The price of both of those, really, really, really high. Um, and maybe you bought um, maybe you bought a new TV, right? You're going to be quarantined anyway. Get a good TV. Um, so you bought a new TV, okay? And so let's say that that's what we made for your basket, okay? Well, let's jump forward a year. Um, all of a sudden, a year from now, we're hoping that we're not all still quarantined, and um, I think we're going to see a lot of volatility in that price. So I give you the same basket from a year ago that probably doesn't apply at the time. You're like, okay, toilet paper, sure, I'll go buy it, but prices are significantly lower. And hand sanitizer prices are significantly lower. Um, the TV, anything with technology outdates itself. Prices are going to be significantly different. Um, you know, you, you may not even want that TV anymore. Maybe they came up with some kind of other technology. Well, the CPI is assuming you buy that same thing. Um, so right off the bat, you can definitely see on that low tier, that drop, that's a lot of volatility because it does take kind of those consumer runs into account. Just like, you know, if, uh, if three months ago we were pricing toilet paper and hand sanitizer, um, well, it was really, really, really low. Um, I think they, I saw in the news they were pulling, pulling it off Amazon, but hand sanitizer was selling for like $70 a bottle. Do we really want to capture that then as an inflation effect or is that kind of a short-term blip? Um, the CPI doesn't make that distinction. It's going to say, nope, that was an inflation effect and we're going to have really, really high spiked prices one month and then the next month a really dramatic drop. You're not going to get that with the deflator because the deflator is measuring its value of production. How much did it cost to make hand sanitizer two months ago? Uh, it cost about a dollar a bottle. How much did it cost to make hand sanitizer at the start of this month? Cost about a dollar a bottle. How much is it going to be at the start of next month? About a dollar a bottle. So if we use the GDP deflator, that you know, value of production really is kind of stable. Um, now, of course, there still may be some waffling as inputs go up and down um, in terms of price, but not nearly as much volatility as we're going to get with the CPI. So we actually think that the flader is probably a little bit more accurate. The CPI is a little bit more popular because again, we can tie it to consumers better. The CPI is going to include the price of used goods. If you bought a used good on your basket list, it's going to be in there. It's also going to include the price of imports, which means, uh, you know, all of our clothes, probably the TV I used the example of, uh, we import a lot of products and those are all going to be included in the CPI. So there's kind of pluses and minuses to each of them. Um, those are the two big ones for the media. There's one more that I'm going to very briefly talk about. And I, I really, I'm going to talk about it for a couple of reasons. One, the book talks about it. Um, they give you like literally a page, if that, I don't even think they give you a whole page, 
in chapter two when they're looking at some of the different price indexes um, where they talk about this one. And then because we're gonna go into a monetary policy section here over the next couple of weeks, um, we're gonna talk about the Federal Reserve a lot. So I think it's a good tie-in. Um, so this one is called the PCE, and then kind of just an extension, you know, dot, 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 the PCE core. So the reason I'm going to at least mention these at all is, again, because these are what the Federal Reserve uses. So as we learn over the next couple of weeks, the Federal Reserve is going to control the money supply in the country. And um, I don't think we have to do a whole bunch of preamble lectures to kind of give you the point of, hey, if the money supply is going up, if there's a lot of money being thrown into society, um, well, that might create inflation. So, um, so if the Federal Reserve controls how much money is getting dumped into society, they want to be able to track the effects on inflation it has. These are the two price indexes that they use to track that inflation. Um, so let me give you, again, quick kind of definitions here, and then we're, the book doesn't talk about them very much. We're not going to talk about them very much. We're, we're pretty much going to use this guy over here. Um, so all right, the PCE, it stands for uh, Personal Consumption Expenditures. Personal Consumption Expenditures. So the PCE index is tracking the prices of goods and services Tracking the prices of goods and services that are in the consumption component of GDP only. Tracking the prices of goods and services that are in the consumption component of GDP only. So effectively, the Federal Reserve says we kind of want to combine or try to combine the best of both worlds here. We definitely think that tracking inflation is something that is more of a consumption or a consumer issue. It's tied more strongly to consumers than other areas. Um, so we really want to focus on only consumer purchases. Um, so it doesn't have to worry about, like in our deflator when we said um, the factory and the robots or whatever I said, um, or the government and the new corona testing or if they buy a satellite or whatever, um, none of that's going to be included. It's only going to look at consumption, so it does focus on consumers. Um, it, at least it kind of gives that kind of element. It also says we're going to try to get rid of some of the volatility. Because in order for it to be consumption, it has to meet those GDP requirements. So we're going to look at production, right? So that value of production for goods and consumption component. So maybe we don't have as much volatility like what, with our hand sanitizer that we were talking about. We were just saying, eh, what's its value in terms of production? So, uh, so the Federal Reserve uses that PCE as kind of a way to kind of take the best of both worlds it does still, of course, have drawbacks. Again, uh, imports still not included. Um, so it does still have some drawbacks, but it does try to kind of take the best of both worlds over there. Uh, and that's what they're going to use primarily. Um, the Federal Reserve is also going to utilize this one here called the PCE Core. Um, so it, same abbreviation, Personal Consumption Expenditures Index Core. Um, so what core means is, is we're still going to use everything from the PCE, but we're going to scratch out energy and food. Um, so they're going to look at consumption with the exception of energy and food. And you might say, well, gosh, that's so much of what we spend our money on. Why would the Federal Reserve get rid of that? Because remember, the Federal Reserve, when they're looking at inflation, their concern, they don't care about demands and, and what people want and things like that. Their concern is, are we creating inflation when we put money into society? That's it. That's all they're concerned with is, did our putting money in society create inflation? So they're going to want to take out things that have a lot of fluctuation, that have no bearing whatsoever on if money was put into society. So, right, let's take energy, gas. Okay, gas is something that, um, that has its own other fluctuating factors. Like um, 
politics. You know, how well are we getting along with OPEC countries? Um, it may have um, actually um, regulation. In the winter, gas refineries are uh, legally allowed to take less pollutants out of gas because, well, the air is so cold that the pollutants rise up above uh, the atmosphere in the United States and float over to England. Sorry for your acid rain. Um, but that effectively changes the price based on a season. Um, it has nothing to do with what the Federal Reserve did. You know, the Federal Reserve just two or three days ago put a whole bunch of money into society, a whole bunch to try to kind of spur some spending during the coronavirus outbreak. But at the same time, gas prices have dropped, um, actually they've dropped about 70 cents in the last two weeks. Um, so, you know, again, that there was no impact of their money dump on the price of gas. Same thing with food. Um, we actually find that food price fluctuates more with supply than it does with money available in society. If we have bad crop years, which we do, right? There's droughts, there's floods, whatever. We see prices and food start jacking up regardless of whatever the Federal Reserve is doing with their money, as well as all related foods, right? You know, uh, oh, corn didn't grow this well, well this year. Um, well, that's going to cause um, prices of beef to change, which is then going to cause the price of dairy to change because the dairy cows didn't get as much, whatever. Um, so the Federal Reserve says that the energy and food seem to fluctuate for other factors, not even remotely related to how much money we're putting into society. So they'll take them out in this PCE core index um, and, and just really kind of use those to then track inflation over society. So I've mentioned inflation quite a bit. Um, it's probably time to come up with a formula for that. Um, so what we're really looking at with inflation is the inflation rate. So whenever we look at the inflation rate, we are going to use a rate change or a growth formula. We have already seen growth formulas in this class. We've talked about it with real GDP growth rates, with growth rate and uh, um, growth rate and consumption. Uh, we've seen it a couple of times already. So we are going to use a growth rate formula. You take your change in your price index and divide it by your prior observation of your price index. I C E, and then you will multiply this one by 100 because we are going to convert this into a percent. So any price index that you're using, so like for example, if you're using the CPI, you would do CPI 2 minus CPI 1 over CPI 1 times 100, and that's going to give you some inflation rate. If you were using the deflator, you would take deflator 2 minus deflator 1 over deflator 1 times 100, and that's going to give you some inflation rate. If you, I'm out of board space there, if you were using the PCE, it would be PCE 2 minus PCE 1 over PCE 1, and that's going to give you some inflation rate. Um, Baby, come give me something on. Come give me something on